I love living in the world of books. To me, it's a very, very large world that I think hopefully I could stay in for the rest of my life. swimming pool. So I grew up in Southern California um, as a teenager. I went to the beach every day in the summer. And then as an adult, I moved to New York City where I began going to my neighborhood swimming pool. And that was a very different experience of being in the water. I was swimming back and forth, looking at a black line at the bottom of the pool. And it sounds very boring, but it was actually, I found it to be a very meditative act. Um, my mind just kind of emptied itself out. It was something very zen about it. And I was also fascinated by the community of rather fanatic swimmers that went to this particular pool and all their quirks and rituals. And I really wanted to describe that world uh, in my novel, The Swimmers. Crack. People have asked me if the crack is a metaphor for the pandemic is it a metaphor for what is happening to Alice's mind? And the honest answer is no. I, I am not a writer who thinks metaphorically. I began thinking about the crack as a literal crack in the concrete at the bottom of the pool, just a real thing. I also wanted it to be, though, the beginning of the end of this idyllic swimming pool for these swimmers. I began writing the crack chapter before the pandemic, but I love that it can be read as many things um, by different readers. I think that's part of the beauty of reading is everybody brings a different interpretation to the text. Um, I also later learned, after I'd finished writing the novel, after it was published, that in people with Pick's disease, which is Alice's particular form of dementia, there's a part of the brain called the sylvain fissure. And in people with Pick's disease, that fissure is enlarged. And so I thought, ah, oh, that's so interesting. It's perfect. It's an example of life imitating art. Voice. In my last novel, wrote in a voice that I've become very enamored of. It's the first person plural, which I call the we voice. And I use that voice also in the swimmers in the first two chapters, we being we the swimmers. I also use it in the fourth Bella Vista chapter, we being the voice of the nursing home. And I find this voice, it's a very capacious voice. It's a very uh, almost joyous voice. It allows me to tell a story that's a much larger story than if I were to tell the story from the point of view of just one particular swimmer. I think because of the repetition of the word we, that there's something very rhythmic and musical about using this voice, which I also love. Nursing home. The chapter called Bella Vista is told in the voice of a slightly malign corporate entity, and the entity being that of the nursing home. And people say to me, it must have been so difficult to write that chapter, but actually it was not difficult at all. It was the first time that I'd written in the voice of the oppressor. Uh, traditionally, my we voices have been we. In my previous novel, the picture brides, Japanese picture brides who came to America. So we the oppressed victims. Uh, but the voice of Bella Vista is told in the voice of the evil authori authoritarian oppressor. And it came to me surprisingly easily. I think using that voice brought out my inner sadist. <laughs> and it was actually great fun to write. As soon as I came up with the first line of that chapter, which is, you are here because you have failed the test, that gave me the idea for the voice and the rest of the chapter, and then I was off and running after I heard that first line in my head. Writing. I came to writing after having failed as a painter. All throughout my 20s, I was painting. It was the only thing I wanted to do, but I was just not that good in the end. And because I had failed as a painter, when I began to write, I was older, and I began writing very much in the spirit of play. I felt like I had nothing to lose since I'd already failed as a painter. And I found that I was actually very comfortable with the medium of language. Uh, I felt, for whatever reason, 
more comfortable with words than I did with the language of paint. I love living in the world of books. To me, it's a very, very large world that I think hopefully I could stay in for the rest of my life.